This is Retro Sports Radio. Visit RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. The Detroit Tigers faced the Oakland Athletics for a Tuesday afternoon game at Oakland Alameda County Coliseum on August 24, 1982. Detroit came into the game with a 64-60 and record under manager Sparky Anderson. But excitement around the Tigers was on the rise. The team had finished in second place during the strike short in 1981 season and was anchored by a solid core of youngsters including Jack Morris, Lance Parrish, Alan Trammell, Lou Whitaker, Kirk Gibson, and newcomer Chet Lemon, who had been acquired in the offseason in a trade to the White Sox for Steve Kemp. Oakland had lost to the Yankees in the ALCS in 1981 and were now struggling in 1982, entering the game with a 56-70 and record under manager Billy Martin, in which would prove to be his final year with the A's. This audio recording is from the Detroit radio broadcast featuring the legendary announcers Ernie Harwell and Paul Carey. They wind up in the first pitch on the way. He takes a ball very wide, the fastball from Keogh. Gross is in very close at third on the grass. The right-handed pitches. It's a strike call to Mike Riley. The Michiganian went up with a right-hand call. One and one, the count on Whitaker. Final appearance for the Tigers in this ballpark this year. Lou takes. There's a strike. Letter high outside corner. Keogh throwing hard here in the first three pitches. Now Gross is backed up. He's wide of the bag at third with a one-two pitch coming to Lou Whitaker. Keogh works off the third base side of the slab. Feet close together. Gets his sign from Heath. Winds and pitches. And Whitaker hits a foul out of play in the seat down below. Wilson and Herndon are set to follow here in the opening inning. Each of those had uh, home runs in the game last night. As the Tigers took the opening game of the two-game set. Keogh delivers. Whitaker swings and misses on a high hard one. Struck him out. Glenn Wilson will be the Tiger batter. Glenn Wilson. Young center fielder has impressed a lot of observers uh, since he came up from Evansville. Last night he had a home run, a single in the walk. Ended up with uh, two for four. Picked up a couple of R- RBIs. Here's a line shot right to the glove of Gross. Forty out. The ball hit about as hard as anybody can hit one, but Gross was standing right in its path, and he gloved it. Two down, Herndon stepped up for the Tigers. Barry batting 292. 19 home runs and 69 RBIs. One of his home runs last night. He also had a single last evening. Right-hand batter backs off. It's in too close from the right-hand pitching Keogh. Jim and Kim and uh, Joshua Cooper from Toledo, Tiger fans here today. There's a foul back into the seat. Had a good bit of morning uh, fog and overcast. It burned off about an hour before game time. And now the skies are clear and the sun is bright in Northern California. Herndon uh, takes and the pitch is in close at the knee. Two and one, the count of the Tiger left fielder. Keogh into action delivers. Swing and a foul back to the screen. 2-2 the count on Larry Herndon. The Tigers now have won seven and lost one against the Oakland team this year. They've handled them uh, fairly easily. Jack Hommel out of the ballpark, the former Tiger trainer, recovering from his hernia operation and in good shape. Herndon uh, swings and uh, nubs one uh, foul at the plate. And Mike Riley wants to inspect the ball. He says it's all right. He'll keep it in play. 2-2, the count on Herndon. Another visitor today was Charlie Silberic. One-time Tiger coach. Working here with the Oakland A's now. Here's the motion by Matt Keogh. He pitches and Herndon hits a fly ball to right. Armas comes in and near the line. Running hard. Makes the catch. And the Tigers go one, two, three in the first. The end of a half inning, no score. This is Ernie Harwell, and I'm pleased to have the Detroit Free Press as a sponsor of our 1982 Tiger broadcast.
You know, I have a lot of friends who've been free press fans for years, and the first thing they do when they get up in the morning is to turn to the sports section of the free press. Reading the sports section is like having an instant replay right there at your breakfast table, especially their baseball coverage. When it comes to baseball, the free press is in a league by itself. Complete, concise, interesting, informative. Did you know that they devote an entire page just to baseball every day of the week? You don't find that kind of coverage in many newspapers, but the free press has it. And I guess that's one reason why the free press is Michigan's first newspaper for sports. To get the free press delivered to your doorstep, phone 222-6500. That number again, 222-6500. The free press, first, when you need it most. Thousands of people have gotten a slice of the good life. The exciting instant lottery game. But what about you? Are you one of those who think most of the prizes have been won by now? In point of fact, there are still millions of winning tickets left, including instant winners of $25,000. And the grand prize? $1,000 a week every week for the rest of your life. So don't miss your chance at the good life. Your chances were never better. Brought to you by the Michigan Lottery. Well, the Tiger rookie right-hander Jerry Uger is heating up now. Jerry's won seven games and lost six. This is his 17th start. Talking about the uh, rookies, uh, the uh, Boston Braves won here back in 1937. And uh, two rookies who were 20-game winners. You don't find that very often. Uh, Lou Fetty and uh, Jim Turner. You remember Jim a good bit later on was a coach for many years with the New York Yankees until he retired down to his uh, home state of Tennessee. But Ricky Henderson, who is in the spotlight these days because of the way he's chasing Lou Brock's record, a cinch to break it. He's only uh, three away from a tie at the moment, and he'll be leading off against uh, Jerry Uger. Here's a hand for Henderson as he's announced on the public address system. Batting 271, he has uh, eight home runs and 45 RBIs. He's walked 105 times already with uh, about six weeks to go. Right-hander against the right-hander, no score first inning. And Ricky takes a ball low, ball one. Jerry Uger trying to hold him off now. Here's the wind-up by Jerry. He delivers a low one. You may have heard Dan Petrie uh, talking on our pregame interview about how tough Henderson is to pitch to with that uh, shrinking strike zone of his, the way he hits in the crouch. Stands a good bit away from the plate. Right-hander against the right-hander. The 2-0 pitch, and Uja fires one outside. The ball three. And, of course, it's got to be in the back of the pitcher's mind. Don't walk this guy. And he turns around, and uh, right now he's within the one pitcher putting him on. So Jerry gets his sign, works again. Here it comes, and he takes the strike. Got a fastball over. Three one, the count on the leadoff man, Ricky Henderson. He's attracted a large uh, horde of photographers down there. The motion and the pitch by Uja. He takes a walk. Ball four. So we'll see the test right away for Bill Fahey. Subbing for Lance Parrish. Gross will be the batter. Mm -hmm. Now one thing about hitting uh, behind uh, Ricky Henderson, you'll probably see a lot of fastball. Uja has been using a, a change-up breaking pitch against left-hand hitters. Now whether he'll do it with Henderson on or not, We'll have to wait and see. Gross is hitting 247, six home runs and 30 RBI. Leach holding on the bag with Ricky Henderson. You can hear the crowd, but getting its rhythmic applause. Here's the pitch to Gross. Ricky with the lead. He goes. The pitch is high. Here's the throw by Fahey. Not in time. Stolen base number 116.
Gross out of the batter's box. That pitch to uh, Gross was the ball. The Tigers uh, really expect Henderson to go all the time. Stop being very subtle about it. He just takes off and goes. Now he's trying to get a lead at second of the eighth. Huge appearing in to get the sign from Fahey. Jerry sets and deals, and it is a ball low and away. Ball two on Gross. After Wayne, it'll be Dwayne Murphy. Outfield is straight up on Gross. He's a long ball threat. No score first inning. The Tigers went out one, two, three. Henderson uh, led off with a walk here for the A's and stole second base. Now a 2-0 situation. Here's the set by Uger and the bluffs and uh, Henderson uh, ambles back toward second base. I sure would like to have seen Uger throw the first when Henderson got to the bag. He had a, a lead over there. I don't think he could have gotten back to the bag with any decent toss to first. Now here's the set again by Jerry, ready right to the deal. The pitch to Gross is a low one. And the count is ball three. Henderson generally gets by with sheer speed. He doesn't worry as much as some uh, base runners have in the past, some great stealers, about pitchers' moves or establishing leads and all those uh, other little uh, intricacies that come with stealing. He depends on his speed. There's a ball low, and uh, Gross has a walk. So Uja has walked too. And sets the table for Dwayne Murphy, the left-hand batting set of fielder. Murphy batting 243. He's uh, up there near the top on this club at home runs with 18. He has 75 RBIs. He's the team leader in uh, that department. Here comes Roger Craig out now. He wants to try to settle the Uja down a little bit here in the first inning. Huger went five and a third innings uh, in Anaheim and uh, got the Tiger eight to six victory over Ken Foish his last time out. That was last Friday night. Well, the uh, confab's over at the mound and this Craig goes back to the dugout. The A's have a first inning threat thanks to a couple of walks. Tigers are pulling their infield up a little bit. And here's uh, Dwayne Murphy at the plate. Outfield is straight up and deep on uh, Murphy. Stands uh, a little more forward in the batter's box than most hitters. Huger sets and deals and it is a pitch out but the runners aren't moving. Ball one. have put uh, 15 double steals so far this year. Here's the set. There's a throw to second, and he is back safely. Trammell ducked behind the runner, Henderson, and uh, he slid back head first. Ricky makes all his slides head first. Now he edges off the bag. Uh, Lincoln's that lead. Gross comes off first. Here's the set by Uja. And the pitch on the way, it is a strike on the outside corner. One and one. Mugen has a no 1982 record against this team. In fact, he has no career record against them. Murphy waits on the 1-1 delivery from uh, Jerry. They go the runners. He pitches inside. Throw to third. He's safe. Number 117 for Ricky Henderson. One short of tying the record. Gross trailed him and uh, picked up the back end of the double steal. Three 
One more, and he will tie the all-time record set by Lou Brock. Man on second, man on third. The Tigers will play their infield back. And it is a 2-1 count on Murphy. Easy set the pitch. It is a low one, and Henderson is coming home. On the third goes Gross. The ball uh, knocked down by Fahey, and it'll be scored as a wild pitch. Knocked down by Bill. It bounced over to his left, and the runners moved up one. Henderson gets the run. Gross takes third, one to nothing Oakland in the opening inning. And they have scored on two walks, steals, and a wild pitch. Infield uh, still staying back for the Tigers. And the count is 3-1 and one on Dwayne Murphy. Now Gross comes down the line. Here's the wind-up by Uger. The pitch is a ball in the dirt. He walked him. That'll be the third straight walk up Jerry. Tony Armas will be the next man to bat. And the young Dave Rucker, the California left-hander, throwing in the bullpen for the Tigers. Infield uh, playing back in double play depth on uh, Tony Armas. Tony batting 240, 21 home runs, and 69 RBIs. Outfield is deep and straight up. The pitch to him is a low one and a good pickup by Fahey. Uger has had trouble locating the plate. It started when Henderson was up. A walk to Ricky, a walk to Gross, a walk to Murphy. The be steel sandwich in between. And the Tigers find themselves behind one to nothing in the opening inning. Cabell came over to the mound. The Fahey went out to try to settle down the pitcher. Armas is won for the last 17 times at bat. Right hand about a wedding. Here's a pitch, and it is a ball, and the runner at first to Murphy goes. He'll make it easily. Now that'll be a steal for a Murphy. It'll be the fourth steal of this inning. Murphy's got 24 of them. So oh, Armas steps away. They've got the infield still back with the runners down at second and third. Huger looking to third base, and here's the pitch on the way. It is a strike on the outside corner. Didn't Gross steal home against the Tigers a couple of years ago? Yes, he did. Against Jack Morris, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Jack worked from the windup, and Gross came in. Man who generally you don't uh, count on as being a super base stealer. Armas uh, still waiting, uh, Gross down the line, and the pitch is swung on into the left field. It is a foul ball into the bullpen. Almost a relief to see the uh, bat make contact with the ball. Yeah, you figure the Tigers might have a better chance. That's right. Been a crazy inning so far. The Tigers went out one, two, three. And now the Oakland A's have scored a run without the benefit of a hit or an error for that matter. And they've got runners at second and third and nobody down. And Armas at the plate and uh, Tony swings it. They ground ball to short. Trammell will uh, go to first base with it. Armas is out. Gross scores and on the third goes Murphy. Two nothing Oakland and that at third, one down. RBI for Armas on the bounce out to Allen Trammell. Here's Danny Meyer, the ex-Tiger playing uh, first base. Outfield is uh, straight up on Danny. Maybe a little bit over to the uh, right field side on him. Batting 265, and he has uh, eight home runs, 57 RBIs. It is a ball low. 
Murphy uh, bluffing down the line from third on that pitch from uh, Jerry Uger to Danny Meyer. 2 nothing. Oakland leads first inning. There's a bounding foul hit down toward the Tiger bullpen past first base. Meyer just safely in five of the last six games. Always a threat at the plate, Danny Meyer. Left hand about awaiting. Here's the pitch. He takes a wide one. Two on the count on him. Remember that Meyer started out of the Tiger system with Bristol and really burned up the league that first minor league season. He hit 396 that year. Murphy down the line from third. Now, Yuja may work off the set position this time. Let's see. Looking in, now he goes for the uh, stretch. Looks to third, he pitches. Myers swings and the misses at a low fastball. And the count on Dan is 2-2. He'll be followed by Davey Lopes. Huger to the stretch again. And the pitch on the way. Swung on it to center field deep. Wilson goes back. Here's the tag by Murphy. Wilson makes the catch. Murphy comes home. It's a sacrifice for Meyer. A 3 0 lead for the Oakland team. They have picked up three without a hit. The first three men walked, and all three have uh, crossed the plate. Davy Lopes will be the next Oakland hitter. Davy batting 2-5-3 with 11 homers, 36 runs batted in. Davy had a single and four turns against Dan Petrie in the opening game last night. Wind up by Uger, and the right-hander fires a fastball low, ball one. Lopes cuts and falls it back into the seat behind the plate. He's jumping out in front, 3 0 in the opening inning. Here's the motion now by Uju, the pitch on the way, swung on a line drive right to Cabell at third for the final out. It's three runs on the no hits. There were no errors. Nobody left. That at the end of one inning, Oakland three, Detroit nothing. There are a number of insurance companies who use the word farm or farmers as part of their names. It's probably because many companies started in business insuring farms, ranches, people, and vehicles in the agricultural regions of our country. But there is only one organization with the name of Farmers Insurance Group, FIG. You may recognize their farmer's agent commitment to always be fast, fair, and friendly. Or you may recognize the name of a farmer's agent. These dedicated agents work and live near you. They are active in community affairs because they know that their success is tied to the success of the community. And they realize that their business is totally dependent upon satisfied farmer's policy holders. Farmers and farmer's agents work constantly to keep the cost of insurance down and the amount of protection up. In Ypsilanti, give a call to Nick Brooks, 485-3880. In South Lyon, Tom Groom, 437-5309. Meet the enemy of your spark plug. Gas-robbing, sooty carbon. Motorcraft spark plugs fight the enemy. With Motorcraft's extended tip design plugs, carbon is burned away in normal driving in properly tuned cars. Motorcraft spark plugs from Ford for the future of your car, for sure. In Taylor, look for Eureka Auto Supply on Eureka Road, and in Wixom, see Wixom Auto Supply on North Wixom Road. People who know quality know the honey-baked ham. A ham so good, it'll haunt you till it's gone. 
Honey Baked Ham in Detroit, Roseville, Troy, and in Grand Rapids. The Honey Baked Ham Company. McIvey uh, will be leading off for the uh, Tigers now. They went out uh, one, two, three in the first inning against the right hand of Matt Keogh. Ivy in the game last night hit the ball hard but didn't have a hit. First two times up, he hit the long, hard drives uh, caught by the outfielders. Ivy, Cabell, and Leach will be testing Keogh, and it is a 3 0 lead for Oakland. Uh, the Tigers are batting in the second. Here's a slow pitch to Mike. It's a little bit low ball one. The outfield uh, deep to left on him. And the infield also back. Keogh right hands one of the plate. And Ivy takes the strike on the outside corner. Talking about hard hit balls. Burt Schotten used to keep a scorecard when he managed the Dodgers. And uh, if you hit the ball hard, you got credit. Just as much as if the ball had fallen in for a hit. Here's the pitch, and it is swung on and uh, laced the left. The base hit by Ivy. He reached out on that slow pitch and lines the left field for a single. Well, Mr. Shotton didn't uh, pay too much attention to the uh, actual box score. The ball was hit there on the line drive to third base. He figured that was good as a ball hit hard that uh, wasn't caught in his scorecard. Here's Cabell uh, coming to the bat. Tigers have a man out and nobody down. They trail 3-0. Enos didn't get a hit last, last night. He went 0 for 4. His batting average is 265. A couple of home runs, 32 RBIs for the lanky right-hand batter. He popped this one up. It's over to the second base position. Lopes is under it. He gloves it. And the holding at first is Ivy. Cliff Johnson, the uh, big first baseman, uh, D.H. of his Oakland team, calls Mike Ivy Ivory. Mike says he's been calling me that ever since I came to the big league. Here's Leach ready to step in now. 3-0 Oakland. The Tigers have a man out and the man out in their second inning. Leach did not get a hit last night. He went 0-2. Had a couple of walks. Batting 224, and uh, he takes the ball outside. Rick has three homers. He's knocked in 12 runs this season. Outfield to right on him. Keogh delivers. It is a strike, a fastball in above the knee. This is Sam Weiner from Farmington Hills out to see this series. Now the set by Matt. He pitches. Slow curve hangs outside. Keogh's got a pretty good fastball, but you'll see him throw a lot of slow curves and a lot of sliders. He's another excellent fielder. Now the tall right-hand uh, kicks and deals. Here's a high fly ball, deep right. It may go foul down in the right field corner. It is a foul ball, a long one, but foul. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. You're listening to the Detroit Tigers flagship station, the 50,000-watt voice of the Great Lakes. This is AM 76 WJR Detroit. A long, loud uh, strike on uh, Rick Leach. He hit that one way back of the seat, but he pulled it foul by about 10 feet. So he'll have to try again. 2-2, two, two, the count on him. Keo to the set position. Pitches. It's a strike called. He stood there like the house by the side of the road and watched that one go by. Struck him out. The second strikeout for the Oakland right-hander Keo. Here comes Lynn Jones, who contributed to the Tiger attack last night with singles his last two times up. Two for four in the uh, Tiger victory over Oakland yesterday. It is a fastball low to end ball one. Here's the uh, set now by Keogh. He pitches. Here's his slider in for a strike. One and one. Keogh will throw a screwball, but he'll use that mostly against the left-hand hitters. And the Tigers think uh, he'll throw the spitball once in a while. Here's a ball low. Two and one. Most teams figure most of the A's pitchers throw spitters. 
Well, I think a lot of guys do around the league who uh, don't get credit for it or blame for it, depending on the way you root for him. There's a bounding ball to shortstop. Gloved by Stanley, he flips it over to Lopes, and the Tigers are out as Ivy is forced for the final out. No runs and one hit. No errors. One man left, and at the end of an inning and a half, it is Oakland three, Detroit nothing. Hello, welcome to Murray's Discount Auto Stores with nearly 40,000 items at super low discount prices. I see you have a special on shoes. Well, actually, those are Murray's low everyday prices on brake shoes. I'm really into poochies, but any kind of designer shoes will do. Nobody has more replacement brake shoes than Murray's, and that goes for brake pads and linings, too. Hey, designer linings in my designer shoes makes a lot of sense. See, I run a lot. And to help you do it yourself. Gee, a whole library. We've got books and how-to literature on 40 subjects. Here's a free brake manual. This guy, Brake, has his name on everything. Does he make jeans? Look, I, I don't think you need brakes. I can't go barefoot. Listen, I'll just slip into this fitting booth. No, no, try. that's the turning booth. Oh, is that where they turn out the shoes? No, that's where Murray's turns rotors and brake drums, right in the store. On second thought, maybe all I need are heels for my shoes. Uh, sir, I don't think you really understand. No, no, look. How about tap? Wait, hurry to Murray's and save on Minute Wax by Turtle Wax. Let you wax any car in less than 15 minutes. Just $3.99 each through Wednesday at Murray's Discount Auto Stores. Of all medications for acid indigestion or heartburn relief, which one is right for you? For years, Maalox has been recommended most by doctors. Now the antacid ingredients in Maalox plus an anti-gas ingredient are in Maalox Plus tablets smooth, good tasting, and Maalox Plus tablets work fast to relieve acid indigestion or heartburn. But don't just take my word for it. Try Maalox Plus tablets. You'll find you can't do better. Use only as directed. Maalox Plus tablets are available wherever antacid tablets are sold. Number 42. The A's coming to bat, and it'll be Mitchell Page to lead off. He starts the bat and takes a fastball outside of all one. Three-nothing, Oakland ahead of the Tigers. Outfield uh, bunches uh, toward the middle on uh, Page. He's hitting 263, and he takes a half cut. Couldn't hold up, and the count is one and one. It'll be Heath and Stanley to follow. Each uh, of these teams uh, leaves for a trip after this game. Well, the A's go to Milwaukee. The Tigers head up the road to Seattle. Huger winds and deals. There's a swing and a miss by Mitchell Page. Breeze is blowing out today from the plate toward the outfield. Now Page not quite ready to get back into the batter's box. A's on this homestand have won six and lost five. Here's the wind up in the pitch. Swing and a little chopper hit on the ground over toward first base. Page has hit safely in five of the last six games. He's another one who's a threat on the bases. Huger winds, delivers, and Page hits a high pop-up into short right center. Whitaker going back now. Here comes uh, Jones, and it's Lynn Jones to make the catch. Mike Heath, who didn't play in the game last night, he's the catcher. He'll be up there now for the A's. Okay. Heath hitting 246 with one home run and 31 RBIs. He's hit in uh, six straight games. Native of Tampa, Florida, Mike Heath. One time Yankee property, he started with the Yanks. They traded him to the Rangers, but he never got to play there. He came uh, to Oakland uh, from uh, Texas. Here's the pitch, swung on and fouled back.
Buger lets him over, goes into action again, and it is a bon attempt. Did he offer on that one? Well, let's get a sign from the umpire. Yes, he did. Outfield a little bit to left. You see, wind up in the pitch. He swings and misses. Well, he must not have offered on that one. It was <laughs> now it's strike two, one and two. Huge uh, deals. There's a drive to right. It'll go foul back of the seat. Bright sunny day in uh, Oakland. Across the bay from San Francisco. Huge uh, ready to go to work again. Here's the pitch to Heath. It is a wide one. Uh, two two to count. It's the fourth year that the Heat has been here with the A's. Stands deep, feet close together. Right-hand hitter against the right-hand pitching of Uger. Uh, Jerry winds and deals, and it is low, ball three, full count. No game for the Tigers tomorrow. They will resume action the uh, next evening, though in the Kingdom in Seattle. Uger checks his sign. Here's the pitch. He takes and he's on with the base on ball. Well, Uger had him and then lost him. He had two strikes on him and then walked him. In that uh, Thursday night game when the Tigers open their four-game series in Seattle against the Mariners, it'll be Jack Morris against Mike Moore. Here's uh, Fred Stanley, the shortstop, coming to bat. One eighty-nine hitter with one home run, a ten RBIs, right-hand batter. They've got a man at first base. Heath, one man down, three nothing. Oakland throw to first, and uh, Heath is back in time. That is the fourth walk off Huja. He walked three in the opening inning, and all three scored. That's how Oakland uh, picked up that three nothing lead. Here's the set by Jerry, holds it at the belt, but it is, and Stanley takes a fastball on the outside corner for a strike. Don't forget the chicken is coming to Tiger Stadium Friday night, September the 3rd. Tigers will be playing a Billy Martin's A's that night at 7.35, and it'll be the first appearance of the chicken in Detroit at Tiger Stadium. Here's the set, throw to first, he's back in time. Huger taking his time. Uh, Stanley waiting at the plate. Strike one to count on Fred. Huger delivers. It's a pitch out. Throw to first by Fahey. Back in time is the runner Heath. Four steals in that opening inning for the running A's here in Oakland. One out, one on. Huger holds it at the belt. Now pitches, and Stanley takes a strike, a fastball on the inside corner. The other pitching arrangements for the Tigers at the Seattle after Jack Morris. On Thursday, it'll be Wilcox, Petrie, and then Huger to complete the series against the B.D. Bannister and the Perry. And we hope you'll join us for those broadcasts from the Kingdom in Seattle. Here's the set now by Uger. He deals again, and Sammy swings and misses on a low fastball and walks back to the dugout. Struck him out. That's the first strikeout, and now here is the featured performer in this muscular soap opera this afternoon, Ricky Henderson. He walked and stole second and third, came home on a wild pitch in the first inning. He now has 100. And 17 stolen bases. He needs one to tie the all-time mark of Lou Brock. He's up for the second time in two innings. Right-hand batter waiting on Uger. 
two out, one on. There goes the runner. They pitch his outside. Fay he throw is not in time. And he has a stolen base. The fifth steal for the Oakland team. Each time that the Uja has walked the man, that man has stolen second base. And then the four walks and four steals of second, and then also a steal of third. Ball on the count on Ricky Henderson. Two automatic second of eight. That's Heath leading off second. Here's the set by Jerry Uja. And Henderson uh, takes a breaking ball low. Ball two. You get the feeling that some of the A's strategy is predicated on getting Henderson on base with nobody in front of him. And he's got a big lead off second now, gigantic lead. And the pitch to Henderson is a strike. He took a fastball through there. Outfield is straight up on Ricky. Now the set, the uh, channel ducks behind, there's no throw. And now backing up to uh, second base is the runner Heath. Henderson uh, moved out of the batter's box. 3-0 Oakland in the lead in the second inning. Huger checks his time with his catcher Fahey. And they pitched to Henderson, swung on and hit high in the air down the right field line. Jones coming over into foul territory, gloves it, and the side retired. So it's no run, no hit, no walk, no errors, one man left. And we go into the third inning with the Oakland A's leading the Tigers 3-0. Let's see, pliers, vice grips, screwdriver. Yeah, I think I'm pretty much all... Set. What you're listening to is somebody putting together his new lawnmower. He wouldn't have those problems if he bought a Snapper high-back lawn machine. Because your Snapper dealer assembles it for you. Things like attaching the throttle control, checking the torque, putting in gas and oil, everything from top to bottom. He'll even show you the best way to operate your new high-back. Ah, oh, darn it. Gonna need a couple more tools. Might as well bring my whole work. So instead of having to empty your toolbox just to put your new lawnmower together, Get a versatile lawn machine that comes assembled and ready to work for you. Get a Snapper High Vac. Of course, the only place to get a Snapper High Vac is from an independent Snapper dealer. So stop by. He's got it all together. Honey, call Mr. Tersuki. I need help reading these directions. Maybe the library's got a... Phone. Snapper, among other things, it's the lawnmower you don't buy in a box. Elsie the Cow, the Borden Company's friendly representative, invites you to say yes to Michigan and its great state fair this year. And to spur you on, Elsie has put a free ride coupon on your Borden homogenized low-fat and 2% fat milk cartons. Just clip this coupon and take it to the fair with you. In fact, take as many as you like and enjoy a free ride on Elsie and Borden. By the way, Jimmy Lance will be broadcasting daily from the fair between 10 a.m. and noon. Drop by and say hello. So come to the fair with your Borden coupon August 27th through September 6th. Who says there's no such thing as a free ride? Today is the Metro Detroit Chevy Dealers Grand Slam Cleanup Contest. What is John Scallion of Sterling Heights? And his entry was made at Buff Whalen Chevrolet. And his selected Tiger Grand Slam inning is right here, number three. And Bill Fahey to lead it off. The Tigers left hand of batting catcher. Subbing for Lance Parrish, who has uh, gone home. His uh, wife is in labor. Here's the pitch. Swung on. There's a high foul off of first base. Over near the dugout uh, comes Meyer, and he makes the catch. Good catch by Danny Meyer. He slightly overran it, and right at the top of the dugout step, reached back and uh, got it in his mitt. Fahey fouls to first. One away. Here's Trammell. Allen batting 236 with uh, seven home runs and 44 runs batted in. 3-0, Oakland in the lead. They got three in the opening inning without a hit. 
Matt Keogh has allowed the Tigers a single to Ivy. He's been the only runner. Now Matt goes into motion and pitches. It is a fastball low on tram ball one. Gross is in uh, close at third base. Ground ball to short. Stanley has a nice hop. He fires over to first. Two away in the Tigers third. Whitaker, the lead-up man who fanned the first trip, steps up again. Well, we'd like to send get well wishes from the Tigers to Mr. Earl Bailey in St. Luke Hospital in Saginaw. To Mr. Hoyt Joyner in St. Joseph Hospital in Pontiac. Here's Whitaker batting uh, for the second time this afternoon. Mouthfield is uh, straight away on the loo. The infield back except for the third baseman Gross. Here's a foul on the screen. Keogh started him off with a fastball right at the hand. Third inning, 3 nothing Oakland. Outside curve stays outside, and the count is 1-1 one one on Sweet Lou. Keogh working quickly, comes back with a fastball swing and a miss by Whitaker. One ball and two strikes to count on him. Keogh ready again, delivers. Here's a swing and a fly ball to left. Going back is Henderson running hard, and he can't get it. It's off the wall. Whitaker going for two. He has a stand-up double. A left field double off the bat of Whitaker puts a Tiger at second with two men out here in the third. It'll bring up Glenn Wilson. Wilson, the first trip, hit a vicious line drive to Gross at third base to the out. Right-hander against the right-handed. Tigers trail 3-0, third inning. Keogh pitches. Wilson takes the ball low. They got the out. Field uh, swung extremely uh, toward left on uh, Glenn Wilson. And he looks at a strike on the outside corner, one and one. Keogh checking his time with his catcher Heath. Which is, and it is a strike, a slider on the outside corner, throw to second. Lopes coming. Uh, in behind Whitaker, but there's no damage. Three nothing Oakland. Tigers trying to do something about that deficit here in the third inning. Whitaker coming down the line from second, gets a longer lead. Set by Matt Keogh, he pitches. It is a low outside fastball, 2-2. Wilson better than he's standing deep. Here's the pitch. He taps it foul over toward the Tiger dugout. Well, the American Legion uh, Regional Tournament getting underway. The first round action Wednesday in the Great Lakes Regional at Arlington Heights in Illinois. Allen Park, Michigan against uh, Levittown, Pennsylvania will be one of the feature games. Here's the pitch. He swings and misses. Struck him out. No runs, one hit, no errors, one man left. We go to the last half, the third, Oakland three, Detroit nothing. Gee, it's good to be back here again. At the ball game in Detroit again. Back where my heart has always been. With the Detroit Tigers playing baseball again. Baseball is like an old friend. The longer it's part of your life, the more you like it. That's why so many people come out to see the Detroit Tigers play. It feels good. The Marathon Oil Company loves baseball just like you do. And the Marathon Oil Company is proud to be here with the Detroit Tigers. It's good to be back here again. You know it is. With the Detroit Tigers playing baseball again. Detroit Tigers and the Marathon Oil Company. 
We got together to do it better. And we did. If you're a sports fan and you don't have the WJR listening habits weekday evenings, you could be missing some of the best radio around. WJR Sports Director Frank Beckman chairs Sports Wrap each evening from 8 to 11, a sports talk show that takes you behind the scores and commentary and puts you in touch with some of the biggest names in sports. So if you want to tune in on sports, tune in to WJR Sports Wrap weeknights from 8 to 11 and following Tiger Baseball right here on WJR Detroit. There was uh, no home run in the Tiger third, but John uh, Scanion wins a pair of tickets to a Tiger game, compliments to the Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. He's ahead of the Tigers, 3 nothing. We're going now into the last half of the third, and Gross will lead it off. Wayne uh, takes an inside pitch, ball one. Gross walked in the first setting, and there's a low one, ball two, the count on the big uh, left-hand batting infielder. In that opening inning, Henderson, Gross, and Murphy, all three walked, and all of them scored runs. Uh, Henderson picked up a couple of steals and now has 117 for the year. Gross looks, and the pitch is low, ball three. Three and oh, the count on him. Huger also walked the man in the second, so he's issued four walks. There's a strike. He got his fastball over. Three and one. Jerry uh, checks his sign with Fahey, his catcher. Works again. Here it comes. And Gross swings and misses on a change. That's the pitch that the usual will use against left-hand hitters. Got to keep them a little bit more off balance. Earlier in the year, he'd had a lot of problems with the left-hand batter. And he added that pitch to his repertoire. Now Gross steps out and back into the batter's box here in Oakland. Wind up by Uger. He pitches, and there's a fly ball to center field. Wilson is there to his right. He gloves it, and there's one away. That's the third outfield put out for the Tigers. Mm -hmm. Plus one foul fly that was caught by Lynn Jones. Well, you can't count it as four if you want to be precise. And here's uh, Dwayne Murphy coming to bat. He walked and scored a run in the opening inning. Oakland ahead, 3 0 in their third. Swing and a foul ball hit on the ground down toward first base. Murphy, one of the uh, speedsters and a great outfielder and a good hitter. Basically a fastball hitter. Stands deep, fairly close together with his feet. Here's the pitch, and he takes the ball outside. Tigers try to play, uh, pitch him with the breaking balls away from the plate. Now the motion of the pitch, he is jammed with a fastball that got the inside corner. One and two, the count on Dwayne Murphy. One out, nobody on three, nothing open, third inning. Final appearance for the Tigers in this ballpark in 1982. Now the motion of the pitch, it is high, it was a close one, 2-2. Two, two. In that National League game, the only Major League game uh, going on besides this one, the Cubs are leading 8-4 now in the eighth inning over the Giants. Dulares and Buckner have hit home runs for their teams. Jenkins and Gale with the starters. There's a fastball low. And the count is full, 3-2. Gale has been relieved by Holland and uh, Brining in that order for the uh, Giants. Here's the motion and the uh, pitch on the way. He takes the walk. That will be the fifth walk issued by Eugene. Tony Armas, who drove home a run with a bounce out the travel to shortstop in the opening inning, will be the batter. Mm -hmm. And they've got the infielder double played up against Tony. Huger stepping off the slab now, not quite ready to go to work again.
Murphy getting a lead draws the throw over there to uh, Leach. And they pitch on the way. There's a drive to left. Might be. Hernan goes back to the wall. Reaches. Makes the catch. About as far back as he could go and retreating and holding at first is uh, Murphy. The ball dropped by Leach, but uh, Murphy just stays at first base. A long, hard drive up the bat of Armas is picked off the fence by Herndon. That keeps the man at first. There are two down, and uh, Danny Meyer will be the batter. Oh, the infield can play back on Danny. 3-0 Oakland leads. They're batting in the third inning against Huger. There's a toss over to first. No damage over there. Murphy back in plenty of time. Is a fastball outside. Murphy's been on on uh, two straight walks. Billy Rogel of the Tigers once uh, set a record. He drew seven straight walks in 1938. Mel Ott and Eddie Stanky later tied that mark. That's a lot of walking in a row. Meyer waits, but the throw goes to first base again, and uh, Murphy back safely. Meyer played uh, just about straight away. They play him deep. Mays have a 3-0 lead over the Tigers. Here's the set by Uger. Runner goes at the pitch out. Fahey's throw to second is in time. He cut him down. Murphy is out. Trammell covering, putting the tag on Murphy. And they go out 1-2-3 in the third. In the three, Oakland three, Detroit nothing. First thing in the morning, right there on your doorstep, Free Press has the latest news to start up your day. First thing in the morning, news, sports, and features, funny things to make you smile and help you on your way. Free Press, first when you need it most. When you're first for sports, people expect first-class sports coverage. And that's just what the Free Press Baseball page delivers. It not only gives you box scores, but the stories behind the scores and the stats behind the stories. Plus a complete rundown of today's starting pitchers, their league record, and their stats versus the opposition. Now that's first-class sports coverage. And that's what helps make the Free Press Michigan's first newspaper for sports. Free Press. For home delivery of the free press, phone 222-6500 today. If you've got a bunch of choosy, picky, hard to play them eaters, and you're growing out of your mind, then head for Bonanza, the least appetite of all kinds. Head for Bonanza instant, yeah, head for Bonanza instant. Bonanza knows how to please a family. Terrific meals and low Bonanza prices. So, if you can't please them at home... It's Farmer Jack savings time. Time to save on California head lettuce. 24 size, only 58 cents at Farmer Jack. Uh-uh, going back. 3-0 Oakland, the uh, Tigers come to bat now in the fourth inning. Larry Herndon will lead it off, and let's tune in on Paul Carey. All right, Ernie. Uh, Larry uh, got up to the batter's box, went back to the uh, dugout, and uh, apparently uh, picked up a different piece of timber. I think he got up there and realized it wasn't his bat. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> come Herndon to the plate. He'll be followed by Ivy and Cabell in the fourth inning. Matt Keough has struck out three, has not walked anybody, and allowed two hits. There's a looper toward left field. That'll be a hit for Herndon. One hop to the mid of Henderson. He charged, then played it safe. And Larry is on with a leadoff single. Mm -hmm. 
I think we've had a reminder about a station break. So let's get, try to slip one in here. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. This is the 50,000-watt voice of the Great Lakes and the flagship station for the Detroit Tigers. You're listening to AM 76 WJR Detroit. Here's Mike Ivey. Ivey has singled the left for the first Tiger hit in the second inning. Earned in at first the pitch to him, and it's taken low and outside for ball one. Keogh with 10 wins, a 16 defeats. That's had kind of a dotted record. One year he had 17 losses and only two victories. Ivy swings and pops it up to short right field. Backpedaling his lopes, he gives way to Armas, and to Tony, uh, just not too far back to second base position, makes the catch. Well, there's one out with Herndon at first, and Enos Cabell will be the batter. Heath goes out to talk to Keogh. Keogh's had uh, some problems with control this year. And, uh, but he's not evident any here so far in this game. Well, they nope, toss the first base. Herndon gets back. Second round to see if there's been a change. We got some announcement about somebody with stomach spasms. Another toss to first. Larry is back. See any change defensively that I can note. Here's the pitch. It's a pitch out and not much of one. Uh, Cabell drops the bat at the plate. Heath had stepped way to his right, reached back toward the plate. And Enos is having a conversation with Mike Riley about that. He's jabbering away, uh, standing outside. Turned in at first with one down here in the Tiger fourth inning. Three nothing A's. They scored without a hit. And they first inning on three walks, four stolen bases, a wild pitch, and a bounce on a sacrifice fly. All contributing to the three runs. Cabell checks his swing and fouls it back. Two strikes on E. Herndon at first with a leadoff single. Ivy is hit a pop out to right field. And now Cabell with a two-strike count. Play pitch to Enos. Fouled back into the stands up behind the Tiger dugout. Matt Keough uh, comes from a fine athletic family. Of course, his dad was a former Major League outfielder. Played with six different Major League teams. Now scouts for the Cardinals. But, uh, and his... Uncle Joe uh, played with the A's and the White Sox. There's a swing and a miss. Cabal fooled throw to first back is Herndon. That's four strikeouts for Keough. He gave him a changeup. And brings up Rick Leach. First baseman, Rick Leach. Ah, well, the, uh, we had some information about somebody uh, with some stomach spasms, and it turns out I checked the defense, didn't see any changes there, and didn't notice, but we're working with three umpires. Larry Barnett has been excused for the day. Pitch is low for ball one to Rick Leach. The A's really overshipped their outfielders on uh, the Tiger hitters. They're shifting way to right on Leach. And Rick takes the strike, one and one. Leach took a call third strike his first time up. He went 0 for 2 in the opener here last night. Toss over to first base, and uh, Herndon gets backhand first. Matt's dad, Marty, was not only a uh, Major League uh, baseball player, but was perhaps one of the finest football players uh, developed in this area. The old, uh, in those days, he was playing a triple threat tailback. 
big lead for Herndon at first. The pitch to Leach. On the corner, it's a strike. One and two on Rick. He goes back and grabs a handful of dirt. Flips it away. Now the pitch from Keough. Just a bit wide. Two and two. Keo has not had much uh, luck winning here at home. His record two and nine this year at home, eight and seven on the road. But he's got a three nothing lead today. Leach fouls it back to the screen. Matt's been giving up a bundle of home runs this season, a total of 28 so far this year. Last year, he gave up, uh, of course, a shortened season, but he gave up 11. Leach takes it in the dirt. It bounces away from Heath, but out in front of the plate. He just puts it back to Keo. No advance by Herndon. So it's a full count now on Rick. And uh, Keo uh, figured that ball got damaged a little bit, skipping in front of the plate and off the shin guard of Heath. Now he exchanges it. Not a cloud in the sky here. You know, the Oakland folks and the Tigers came out of the ballpark were almost apologizing about the weather. You know, they're the natives. They should know it would burn off, and it sure did. Now the pitch. There goes Herndon, and it's taken outside for ball four, and the Tigers get two men on for the first time in the same inning. Leach at first, Herndon at second. The first pass issued by Keough. And Heath wants to have a talk with Matt. The batter will be Lynn Jones. Lynn had a couple of hits last night. He had not played in the Tiger game in two weeks. A little strain of the uh, right ankle. And uh, Lynn is playing in right field with Chet Lemon suffering from a pulled hamstring. Lynn came through with a couple of singles up the middle last night. And he uh, hit another ball that was deflected for a double play. May have hit that one harder than anything. Two on, two out. The pitch from Keogh. High and away. Ball one on Lynn. Turned in at second. Leach at first. Keogh delivers. Fouled back above the Tiger dugout into the stand. Now well, they're in the ninth inning at Wrigley Field now, and it's still an 8-4 to four Cub lead. The Giants an unhappy team these days. They feel they got jobbed a bit in St. Louis. Then we're beaten yesterday by the Cubs. Well, they move back into contention uh, with Atlanta failing. Ground ball off the leg of Keogh. It squirts toward third. Everybody is safe. The bases are loaded. Gross picked up the ball near the line, and he had no play anywhere. That was a shot hit up the middle again by Lynn, and this time it came uh, off the foot of Keogh, I believe. It'll be a base hit for Lynn Jones, loading the bases for Bill Fahey. Well, the Tigers with a chance to climb back in it here in the fourth inning. have loaded the bases with two off. Fahey uh, popped a foul to Danny Meyer his first time up. Bill Stubbing for Lance Parrish here this afternoon. On the spot right now at the plate. Here's the windup by Keogh, the pitch. He checks, it's on the outside corner, strike one call. The look to third, the full windup. Keogh pitches, ground foul. He changed up on him. And he just uh, got a little piece of that. He's out in front of it. Two strikes on Bill. One-time infielder, Matt Keogh. He played three years as a pro as an infielder before becoming a pitcher. Bases loaded with Tigers. Two strikes on Fahey. Two out. The pitch to Bill. He swings and bounces a foul down past first base coach Dick Krasuski.
RPO off the mound. Uh, now walks back up. Tigers have four hits off him, but have not been able to score. Two strikes on Fahey. Kehoe delivers. Ground foul again uh, over toward the Tiger dugout. He hanging in. Lance was in the initial lineup, but he got the call out here at the ballpark and uh, put his street clothes back on again and is headed back home, uh, catching a plane out of the Bay Area. The call that Arlen uh, was in labor and hopefully about to expect uh, to uh, produce their second child. To join David. Here's the pitch to Fahey. High for a ball. That was a fastball from Keogh. John Walkenfuss is uh, suffering from a sprained ankle. He is helping out and in uniform, and he's down in the uh, bullpen. But not nearly 100%. So Fahey is the man behind the plate here today. And there's a wide one to build. 2-2 two -two count. Heath up ready to throw. Heath likes to throw to the bases. He has a far better percentage of cutting down runners than Newman, who sees uh, more action behind the plate. Newman uh, with a little better bat. 2-2 Two -two count, base is loaded, the pitch to Bill Fahey. High for ball three. Well, Keogh got two strikes on him. Fahey kept piling him off. Now he's working finely. He worked a couple of uh, pitches that were just off the outside corner. That one was high. Well, this will uh, free the chains on the base runners. Well, Mary Garound starts the pitch. Swung on, fly ball to left field. Should be caught. Henderson is under it. He waits. He's got it. And the Tigers load them but leave them. And after three and a half innings, Oakland three, Detroit nothing. If you want to clean up by on a new Chevrolet, now is the time during Chevy's gigantic factory-authorized year-end clearance. Special factory incentives make it possible for your Chevy dealer to save you hundreds of dollars now on many popular Chevrolets. Save hundreds of dollars now on Chevy Chevettes, including Chevette Scooter, already one of the lowest-priced four-door hatchbacks sold in America. Save hundreds on the versatile Chevy Citation. Citation's been the best-selling front-wheel drive car in America over the past three years combined, based on manufacturers' retail deliveries. Save hundreds of dollars on Chevy Celebrity, one of America's roomiest front-wheel drives. Save hundreds of dollars on Chevy Cavalier, utilizing advanced technology in a sedan, coupe, hatchback, and wagon. Savings apply only to retail sales on new 1982 models delivered by August 31st. So hurry. See your Chevy dealer now during Chevy's gigantic factory-authorized year-end clearance. There's one chainsaw that continues to be the largest selling in the world, and that says a lot about a steel. To be top saw, a steel's got to be rugged, hard working, smooth running, and easy to start. So for the best selling steel chainsaw, check the yellow pages under saw. If that's the largest selling, hardest working cutting machine, then that can only mean. That's right, it's a chainsaw from steel. Nothing works as hard as a steel. Today's Tiger game is being brought to you in part by the Michigan Bureau of State Lottery. But the game's not over yet. Baseball, that is. Back to Ernie and Paul for more. Yep. Bottom of the fourth inning here at the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum. Danny Meyer will be leading it off. Second time up for Whitey in the game. Danny had a sacrifice fly to drive in one of the three runs in the first inning. In case you joined us late, wildness by Jerry Uger contributed to three Oakland runs. They still do not have a hit off Uger. Here's the windup, the pitch to Meyer. Swung on and popped foul down the third baseline. Long run for Cabell. Can he get there? Nope. Can't quite reach it down in the bullpen. There's a lot of space to run uh, behind first and third here at the Oakland Coliseum. 
Dan fell back from uh, behind the plate. Odd configuration in foul territory. Looks like a giant, weird-sized keyhole. Now the windup, the pitch from Uger. It's low and outside. One and one on Danny Meyer. Future into the motion now. Delivers to the left-hand hitting first baseman. It's uh, just off the outside corner. Uger thought he had it. Two and one. Well, he walked Ricky Henderson to lead off the ball game. Henderson. Stole second. Now the pitch to Meyer. Swung on a high foul fly to right. Racing is Leach, but he won't get to this one. It's back in the stands. Getting back to that first inning, he walked Ricky Henderson to lead it off. And Henderson stole second, number 116. He walked Wayne Gross. Then they pulled a double steal. Henderson getting his 117th. One within Lou Brock's record. Then a wild pitch brought home Henderson. And Dwayne Murphy walked. He stole second. A bounce out by Tony Armas got in a run and a sacrifice fly by Meyer scored the other. Low and inside, 3-2 count now on Danny Meyer. Now three walks, four stolen bases, and a wild pitch in that inning. There's called strike three. Meyer started the first base, and he's out of there. Second strikeout for Uger. Oh, Here's Davey Lopes, who uh, lined out to Cabell his first time up. Got a final now from Wrigley Field, the only other matinee in the majors today. The Cubs defeated the Giants 8-4. Eight, eight runs, 10 hits. The Giants had four runs and six hits. Rich Gale started and uh, didn't last very long. He left in the second inning. There's a uh, call strike on Davey Lopes. Gale the loser, 5-13, and 13, and Fergie Jenkins... Hung in there after giving up three runs in the first two innings. Wound up with his ninth win against 13 defeats. Strike two called on Lopes. Buckner homered for the Cubs today with two on. Sulars homered for San Francisco. The Giants have lost four in a row. Now the pitch. There's a call strike three. Lopes fooled and he doesn't like it. He's mad, but he should be mad at himself. Beauty by Uger. He really broke one off. Two outs. That'll bring up the left-hand hitting D.H. Mitchell Page. Well, the Giants had climbed back into that Western Division race, but uh, uh, run up into trouble at St. Louis and Chicago. Swing and a miss by Page. He went after a pitch that was almost in the dirt. Here's the windup by Uger. They pitch. Swing and a miss. He took another wild cut. Young fellow came up to me at the uh, coffee shop uh, here yesterday. He says, who do you think's going to win it? The Dodgers or the Giants? I don't think many people consider the Giants to have a great deal of a chance, but they have done a good job and coming back into contention for a while. Here's the windup. The two-strike pitch. Swung on and missed. Three straight pitches. And Uger strikes out the side in the fourth. After four innings, A's three, Tigers nothing. You gotta reach deep inside. We've all felt it. Come on, bring out that pride. The challenge to make every effort count in all we do to bring out the best. Bring out your best. The challenge for us was to brew a light beer worthy of the king of beers. One with a clean, distinctive taste. Budweiser Light lives up to the challenge. Bring out your best. Budweiser Light. Bring out your best. Budweiser Light. To brew Budweiser Light, it took time, patience, and a commitment to quality. But then, the best never comes easy. That's why there's nothing else like it. 
Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. For all your high-altitude indoor and outdoor projects, True Value Hardware Stores are offering dependable Werner aluminum ladders with up-to-date features and down-to-earth prices. Hi, Pat Summerall to tell you their ruggedly built extension ladders have traction tread steps, double rung locks, and slip-resistant shoes. And their sturdy step ladders have bracing on both top and bottom steps. Werner ladders are designed for safety and stability. And you'll find a wide selection, all value priced, at participating True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers. It's Farmer Jack Savings Time. Time to save on USDA Choice Full Cut Beef Round Steak. Only $1.85 a pound at Farmer Jack. Here's Alan Trammell to lead off for the Tigers in the fifth inning. With Ernie Harwell, this is Paul Carey at the Oakland Coliseum. Wind up of a brief two-game stay here. Tigers won the opening game last night 5-1 to one behind the pitching of Dan Petrie. But trail 3-0 as we move to the fifth inning today. Swing and a miss by Trammell. Keo has shown uh, some excellent off-speed breaking pitches. Matt has struck out four, walked one, and allowed four hits. The right-hander kicks and pitches to Trammell. He runs up as though the bunt holds off at the ball. One and one on Allen. Trammell uh, bouncing back from that uh, shoulder ailment. Now the pitch from Keo. It's high. Two and one on Allen. Now with uh, Tom Brookins nursing a bad elbow. Tigers a little short. Swung on a fly ball to right field. Armas drifting into his right. Flips the glasses down. He's got it. And there's one up. Now before Blue Whitaker bats, let's pause for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. This is AM 76, the great voice of the Great Lakes and the flagship station for the Detroit Tigers, WJR Detroit. Wayne Gross in tight at third, the pitch to Whitaker. He swings and misses. Lou doubled over the head of Ricky Henderson his last time up. One for two today. Keo working quickly, comes back. And it's in for a strike. Whitaker shortened, ran up at it, and then just kind of faded away, but it was right through the heart of the plate. And it's two strikes on Lou. Now well, they pitch from Keo. He wastes one outside. One two pitch to Whitaker. Draw a foul to back over the screen into the stands. One out, nobody on here on the Tiger fifth inning. The Tigers uh, moving on up the coast to Seattle tonight. They'll start a four game series in the Kingdom on Thursday night. We'll be on the air all, well, let's see, the first three nights at 10 15. And I think it's a half hour earlier on Sunday at 9 45 Michigan time. Whitaker takes its outside, two and two on loop. Keo delivers. There's a punch to left foul back into the stands. He just reached out, chopped at it. Count remains two balls, two strikes on Sweet Lou. Now Keo winds and delivers. There's another fly to left. It'll be foul and into the bullpen, into the stands. Good catch by the man down in the corner. Well, the A's have got some sore arms right now. Uh, we're talking about Jeff Jones uh, heading today to Minneapolis to get a shot from Dr. O'Fallon there. And Mike Norris uh, has an ailing shoulder. He's going down to Los Angeles to confer with Dr. Job. Swung on a high fly ball down the left field line. Left fielder Henderson in foul territory there makes the catch. Now Gross and Stanley and Henderson converged on that. There are two down. And that brings up Glenn Wilson. Glenn is hitless in two trips. First time up. He had a screaming line drive right at the mid of Gross at third base. Glenn has hit safely in 11 straight games now and in 15 of his last 16.
Vecchio ready to work. The first pitch to Wilson. Swung on. Line drive right field. A base hit for Wilson. He keeps the streak going. So Glenn is on with two out here in the Tiger fifth inning. Hit number five for the Tigers. That'll bring up Larry Herndon, who's one for two. The Tigers will see the A's uh, when they're back home next. Next Tuesday, the Tigers begin a week-long homestand. Three straight night games, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday against the Angels. Then the A's are in sa Friday night, Saturday and Sunday afternoons. Herndon takes a low one from Keogh. And for the opener of that series with the A's, Friday, September 3rd, we'll have the chicken on our side. The A's will have the chicken on theirs and Fred Stanley. Now the pitch from Keogh. Ground ball to Stanley. He underhands to Mokes for the force at second. That's all for the Tigers. No runs to hit the man left. After four and a half, it's still the A's three, Tigers nothing. People who run in marathons are like highly tuned machines. They train, build their stamina, push themselves to the limit. They experience great physical stress, rather like your car engine does. To help in all this, they often have a special diet. At Marathon, we understand this phenomenon, and we've come up with a special diet for your automobile. It's called Marathon Gasoline. You see, all Marathon branded gasolines have a very special additive that's injected at each delivery. This additive gives better mileage, lowers engine repair bills, and cuts down on engine wear. Your Marathon man wants your automobile to win over the long haul. Treat your automobile to our special diet. It won't lose weight, but it'll sure feel a lot better. Be a winner. Be a marathoner. Marathon. Best in the long run. Win a 1982 Chevette. Play Tiger Chevrolet Grand Slam cleanup. Pick up an entry in contest rules at any Metro Detroit Chevy dealer. No purchase necessary. If you're a licensed driver, 18 or over, just complete the entry and score with your selection of the Tiger inning for a Grand Slam home run. Between now and September 22nd, a name will be drawn and announced on the air before each Tiger game. If a Tiger hits a Grand Slam during the inning named on the selected entry, he or she wins a new Chevette. Other prizes include a World Series trip, $100 cash, and Tiger tickets. Grand Slam cleanup. Enter now at your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Mike Heath will be stepping in to lead it off for the A's here in the fifth inning. Mike walked his first time up. Leading off for Oakland, catcher Mike Heath. Jerry Uger trailing 3 0 uh, as a result of his own wildness in the first inning. He has walked five and had one wild pitch and has struck out four, including the last three in a row. There's a wide one to Heath. Jury into the motion. He kicks and fires. There's a base hit to right field. Through the hole between Whitaker and Leach. Sharp play hit. One hop out of the infield. Now that's the first hit of the ball game for the A's. It'll bring up Fred Stanley with Ricky Henderson on deck. Stanley struck out his only time up. Cabell sneaking in, looking for the bunt. Here's the stretch by Uger. And the pitch, he squares the bunt, takes it low and outside. Some of the folks around uh, Oakland here were kind of perturbed and mad at Fred Stanley because he'd been getting some hits lately as the number nine man in the batting order. And getting on first base, he'd been walking and getting some hits, and they didn't like that out of their number nine man because that clogged up the base paths in front of Ricky Henderson if he should get on. Here's the stretch by Uger. He goes to first base, sending Heath back. Uger taking a little more time now. Right hand hitting Stanley waiting at the plate. There's the pitch. He squares and bunts it foul down the first baseline. Yeah. 
Jack Morris goes in the opener Thursday night at the Kingdom against Mike Moore. Going to see Gaylord again this time around. He got uh, called last night and uh, was ejected from the ball game by plate umpire Dave Phillips for the alleged use of a spitter. Wonder where he got that idea. Now the set. They whoops the hole. Now the one-one pitch and it's low to Heath. Two and one on Mike. Or I beg your pardon, on Stanley. Heath at first base after a base hit. Three to nothing. The A's lead here in the bottom of the fifth. Little toss to first again. Outfield straight up on Stanley and not very deep. Here's the set. Now they throw the first. Leach was coming off the bag. Jackie Moore, the uh, first base coach, out to have a word with the runner Heath. Jackie Brown, I should say. There goes the runner. It's fouled back into the stand. I was right the first time, Jackie Moore. <laughs> One time, uh, Tiger. So it's a count of two balls, two strikes. Stanley swinging away on that 2-1 uh, delivery. Whereas they sent Heath. Let's see what happens here. Stretch by Uger. The runner goes. The pitch is popped in the air. Foul off first base. Leach chasing, still racing after it. He makes a fine catch and then uh, turns around to take a look to see what happened to Heath, and he got back to the bag at first. Good over-the-shoulder catch by Leach. Well off first base and foul ground. Well, that brings up Ricky Henderson. Henderson with two steals today in the first inning is 116th and 117th. Needs one to tie. Lou Brock's record. Uger retired him on a foul fly to right his last time up. Heath is at first base with one up. Uger working from the stretch goes to first driving Heath back. Henderson swinging the bat starts to get into that lean back crotch of his here's the set the pitch to him swung on a fly ball to center field should be caught Wilson with the glasses down looking up into that tough sky makes the catch and Henderson is retired this time around as Heath is still at first base two out well, batter now Wayne Gross who has walked and flied to center the A's got all three runs in the first inning. Uger walked Henderson, who stole second. Walked Gross. And they pulled the double steal, two steals for Henderson. He scored on a wild pitch by Uger, who walked Murphy, who stole second. A bounce out and sacrifice fly, getting in a couple of runs. In addition to the wild pitch scoring one. Here's the stretch by Uger. And the pitch to Gross. It's a pitch out, but no movement at first by Heath. In the second inning, uh, Heath walked and stole second. Fahey cut down Murphy, attempting to steal in the third inning. Jerry delivers. Check swing, it's a call strike on Wayne Gross. 
Now, Wayne was involved in the uh, little melee the Angels and A's had a week or so ago. Huger checking the runner. The pitch to Gross. Swung on. There's a high fly ball to right field. Not deep. Jones over toward the line. Makes the catch. That's all for the A's. No runs. A hit in the man left. After five innings, A's three. Tigers nothing. offer from Motorcraft. With qualifying purchases of Motorcraft spark plugs, oil filters, air filters, or oil, you can get a handsome Ford belt buckle or key ring free now through August 31st. See your participating Motorcraft retailer for details. Motorcraft automotive products from Ford for the future of your car, for sure. In Taylor, see Taylor Automotive Supply on Goddard Road, and in Woodhaven, go to Woodhaven Auto Supply on Allen Road. Delicious meats and cheeses, salads and breads are yours with the Honey Baked Party Tray. It lets you join in the summertime festivities. The Honey Baked Ham Company in Detroit, Roseville, Troy, and in Grand Rapids. Tigers coming to bat here in the sixth inning in Oakland, trailing 3 0. Keo has managed to work out of uh, some difficulties in uh, four of the five innings so far today. Set down the Tigers in order only in the first inning. Here's Mike Ivey, who has singled and hit a pop fly to right. The wind-up by Keough, the pitch to the Tigers' DH, is in the dirt, skips past Heath. Ivey hitting 232. A pitch to him. Half swing. Did he go? The appeal said no. Rocky Rowe uh, handling the right side of the infield now. Larry Barnett taking the rest of the day off. Derwood Merrill is over on the left and uh, Mike Riley behind the plate. First time we've had a chance to see Rocky this season. Jump around from one team to another. High fly ball left to center field. Murphy is right there. Wait, he's got it. And there's one out. Well, it's going to be an important month in the life of Ricky Henderson, certainly, the month of August. I don't think you can say anybody ever had a month like one Tiger did. Uh, Rudy York still holds the record for the most home runs in a single month. He hit 18 in the month of August in his rookie season back in 1937. What a month for Rudy. Cabell ducks out of the way of a fastball. Uh, in that month of uh, August 1937, York did not even get into the starting lineup until the fourth day of the month and hit 18 home runs. Drove in 49 runs in 30 games in that month. Cabell swings and pops a foul off first base. Meyer chasing down toward the bullpen, still racing. He can't catch up to it. Looking at York's record for the month of August in uh, 1937, 49 RBIs. He hit 360, scored 27 times. He had four doubles and two triples. Slugging average for the month, 0.895. One out, nobody on on the Tiger six. Cabell swings a bouncer to Gross at third. He made a good leap, came down with it, throws the first. Cabell is retired. A 
brings up Rick Leach. Leach has struck out and walked. Tigers with five hits by five different batters. Uh, Whitaker has a double, Wilson a single, Herndon a single, Ivy a single, and Jones a single. Uh, Keo kicks and fires, and it's on the corner. Strike one called on Leach. the motion Keo delivers there's a fly ball to left field down the line long run for Henderson he's getting there near the line makes the catch and the Tigers are out in order in the sixth inning after five and a half still Oakland three Detroit nothing nobody trucks like we do we go out of our way nobody trucks like we do come truck with Chevrolet Nobody trucks like we do. For 1982, Chevrolet has been selling more new trucks than anyone. And it's no wonder when you have a truck like the new size Chevy S10. There's never been a truck like it before. Nobody trucks like we do. Come truck with Chevrolet. Now, during the Chevy truck sales drive, special incentives to dealers make possible savings of hundreds of dollars on new S10 and Chevy Love pickups, plus full-size C and K 10 and 20 pickups. You must take retail delivery by September 22nd. Check the savings now during the Chevy truck sales drive, and you will see why. Nobody trucks like we do. We go out of our way. Nobody trucks like we do. Come truck with Chevrolet. Nobody trucks like we do. Now True Value Hardware Stores are offering a convenient and efficient alternative to the messy job of handling and disposing of food scraps, coffee grounds, and other kitchen wastes. Hi, Pat Summerall to say their one-half horsepower True Value Waste Disposer is a quiet-running, continuous feed model that features stainless steel blades and grind chamber for long, dependable service. And this efficient, convenient kitchen helper, the one-half horsepower True Value Waste Disposer, is available exclusively at participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. Dwayne Murphy will lead off for the A's here in the sixth inning. He's walked twice in this game. Three to nothing. The A's lead. They have only one hit. A leadoff single in the fifth inning by Mike Heath. The A's scoring their three runs in the first inning. As Jerry Uger uh, walked the first three men. Ricky Henderson stole two bases. Wayne Gross won. Dwayne Murphy won. A wild pitch scored a run. There's a cold strike on Murphy. Armas's ground ball got in the second run of the inning, and Danny Meyer hit a sacrifice fly for the third. Sosa and James throwing in the bullpen. Swing and a miss for Murphy. Two strikes on Dwayne. Uger looking in to get the sign from Fahey. He's ahead of the leadoff man, Murphy, with a two-strike count. He kicks and fires, swung on, and popped foul. That pitch was out of the strike zone. Cabell coming over, and he can't quite reach it. That ball had some backspin and stayed uh, in play. It hit a couple of feet in front of the barrier down beyond the Oakland dugout. Two strikes on Dwayne Murphy. A ball got loose from the Tiger bullpen where uh, James and Sosa are loosening and uh, time is called. Murphy, Armas, and Meyer do up here in the sixth inning for the A's. Murphy takes its high. One and two on Dwayne. Uh, Jerry winds and pitches. Swung on and missed. He struck him out. Blew it by him. That's five strikeouts for Uger. There's Tony Armas. Tony 
Oh, for four last night, and he's hitless in two trips in this game, although he sent Herndon back to the fence for a long drive in the third inning. Huger has won six out of seven decisions since the 7th of July. Got a win in his last one Friday night in Anaheim. The end of the motion, they pitch to Armas, and the fastball is high for ball one. The A's are noted for lengthy games out here. They've had 35 games of three hours or more this year. Strike called on Armas. been uh, noted for taking a lot of pitches and of course with Henderson that base stealing threat the opposing pitchers are constantly throwing to the bases low to Armas it's a 2-1 count now on the right fielder of the A's Here's the full lineup. 2-1 pitch. Armas fouls it back into the stand behind the plate. Well, it was good to see Wayne Walker, the former Lions linebacker, now television star in the Bay Area, out watching uh, here last evening. Former WJBK radio star Barney Lee in attendance today. Now the pitch from Uger. Swung on and missed. He struck him out. I think Fay, he thought that was out number three. He was going to take that one to the dugout. So two straight strikeouts here in the sixth inning. Six overall for Uger. And the batter will be Danny Meyer, who has a sacrifice fly and the strikeout. Wind up the pitch by Uger. Swung on. There's a fly ball to center field. Wilson going back. Still going back. He reaches. Makes the catch. Misjudged it a little bit, but made up for it. Got to it at the edge of the warning track. Well, the A's are out at one, two, three. After six innings, still Oakland three, Detroit nothing. First thing in the morning, right there on your doorstep. Free Press has the latest news to start up your day. First thing in the morning, news, sports, and features. Funny things to make you smile and help you on your way. Free Press, first when you need it most. And now, the Free Press is first with columnist Carol T. She's moved to the Free Press to take you behind the scenes with Detroit's most interesting people, their foibles and frustrations. Who's in, who's out, what's hot, and what's not. It's Gossip That Glitters with Carol T. Read Carol T. Monday through Friday on the back page of the Free Press and on Sundays in Detroit Magazine. Free Press, first when you need it most. Free Press. For home delivery, phone 222-6500. The Free Press, first when you need it most. Did you know the steel chainsaw is the largest selling chainsaw in the world? That's because it's the best you can buy. And because there's a steel dealer who stands behind every chainsaw sold. So for a chainsaw or weed trimmer, see your steel dealer. He's in the yellow pages under saw. If that's the largest selling, hardest working cotton machine, then that can only mean... That's right. It's a chainsaw from steel. Nothing works as hard as a steel. It's Farmer Jack's savings time. Time to save on grade A backs on prime chicken legs. Just 44 cents a pound at Farmer Jack. Right fielder. Now, Matt Keogh with nine complete games uh, so far this season for the A's. Has been uh, able to hold off the Tigers through the first six innings while he got a three-run lead in the first. It's still a three-to-nothing Oakland lead. As we move to the seventh inning and back for the play-by-play, -play, here's Ernie Harwell. Thanks, Paul. Hi, get everybody. The right-hander Keogh pitching to Lynn Jones, and Lynn uh, takes a strike called of the seventh inning getting started. Now, the Tigers have five hits. They've had a hit in every inning except the first one in the sixth inning. In too close, he almost hit him one-on-one to count on Jones. 
And they had one uh, big threat. They loaded the bases in the fourth with two out, and Fahey, who retired, went into a 3 2 pitch to left field. Otherwise, uh, he's had it uh, pretty much under control. Matt Keogh's working with a 3 0 lead. Jones hits a line drive to left, the base hit, fielded uh, by the left fielder Henderson, and for the second straight game, uh, Jones has two for two against this Oakland pitching. He's the only Tiger with two hits today. The others belong one apiece to Whitaker, Wilson, Herndon, and Ivy. They are the first four in the Tiger batting order. Here comes uh, Fahey to the plate. He has gone off for two. He's fouled to first and fly to left. He'll be followed by Trammell. The infield is halfway up. They've got uh, Meyer not holding on the bag with Jones at first base. Three nothing, Oakland leads. Tigers batting in the seventh inning. There's a ball low. It bounces out in front, almost to the mound. Picked up by the pitcher Keo. He fires to second, not in time to Stanley, and they almost got Jones. Unusual. But he uh, gets the second. That was a weird one. Wow. Ball uh, hit in front of Heath and hit his shin guard or something. It popped out the uh, out near the mound. Keo, the former infielder, made a good throw and almost got him at second. Ball on the count on Bill Fahey. Outfield is straight up, bunching toward the middle on Bill. Jones coming down the line from second base. Three nothing, Oakland leading seventh inning. They got all three of their runs off Uger in the opening inning. Three men walked and all three scored. Here's the pitch. It is a strike call. Also in that inning, in case you missed it, Ricky Henderson uh, picked up two more stolen bases and now needs only one to tie the record of Lou Brock. Here's the set of the 1-1 pitch is very wide to Fahey, two balls and a strike. And Heath wants a conference with his pitcher. Mark Trussaway from Sunnyvale, California, longtime Tiger fan who used to live in the Detroit area, out here to see his uh, heroes in action. So far, they've not been able to get a run in. They have left uh, six runners on the bases, three of them in the one inning. Conference is over, ready for action again. It is a 2-1 pitch to Fahey. He takes a wide fastball, low and away, 3-1 the count on Bill. Keogh, rather quick worker, comes back, and this one is a hit foul out of play in the seat, third base side. Gentleman from San Mateo caught that one on the first stop. Full count on Fahey. Man on second, Jones. He led up with a single, took second on the wild pitch. Here's the pitch. Fahey swings as a fly ball to the right. Armas is there, gloves it. Jones tags, heads to third. Is the throw by Armas to the Gross. Not in time, it bounced away from Gross. Jones starts for home and then checks back. As the pitcher, Keo, did a good backup job at third base. They're throwing the ball to second, claiming that uh, Jones left too early. Lopes uh, takes the throw, but the umpire says, nope, he did not go. Rocky Rowe came down to make the call. So the Tigers have one out, a man at third, and the batter will be traveled. Allen is bounced to short and uh, fly to right field so far. Thank you. 3-0, Oakland has the three. Tigers are trying to get back in this one in the seventh inning. Outfield the left on travel. Jones uh, off the bag at third. Let's see how Keo will work, whether he'll go to the windup. Yep, he will not work to a set position. He'll wind and pitch. Here's the windup, and here's the pitch. It is a ball in too close on travel. Right-hander ready, pitches again, and Trammell. It's a little foul in the dirt back of the plate. Let's pause now for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. You're listening to the Detroit Tigers flagship station, the 50,000-watt voice of the Great Lakes. This is AM 76, WJR Detroit. Trammell swings, line drive, center field, catch by Murphy, a great one as he charged the ball and fires to the plate to hold Jones at third. That one looked like a hit. 
Murphy charged from center field, caught the ball on the run about knee high, came up throwing and fired a one hopper into Heath, the catcher. Jones could do nothing but stay at third. Good play by Murphy. A magnificent center fielder. Oh, that's two down. The Tigers still have a man at third. Nine outfield putouts now by uh, Oakland. They've had uh, two in each of the last four innings. Here's Lou Whitaker. He has struck out, doubled, and uh, hit a foul fly to Henderson, the left fielder. Jones is still at third. He's the second man to get that far in the game of the Tigers. Keogh delivers. Is a bounding ball to Lope. Loves it for the first. The inning's over. The Tigers threaten. Don't score. No runs and a hit from the man left. We go to the last half of the seventh. Oakland three to short nothing. What is a marathoner? A marathoner is someone who wants better gasoline mileage, a smoother running, cleaner engine, and lower maintenance bills. And that's what they get every time they buy gasoline at a marathon service station. You see, Marathon does something special. We inject a top quality fuel additive into our gasoline at each delivery. That means that every Marathon customer gets exactly the right amount of the correct additive to give them better mileage, less engine wear, and lower maintenance costs. That's why they keep on coming back. It pays to be a Marathoner. Try us just once. And perhaps you'll keep on coming back. Be a winner. Be a marathoner. Marathon. Best in the long run. Elsie the Cow, the Borden Company's friendly representative, invites you to say yes to Michigan and its great state fair this year. And to spur you on, Elsie has put a free ride coupon on your Borden homogenized low-fat and 2% fat milk cartons. Just clip this coupon and take it to the fair with you. In fact, take as many as you like and enjoy a free ride on Elsie and Borden. By the way, Jimmy Lance will be broadcasting daily from the fair between 10 a.m. and noon. Drop by and say hello. So come to the fair with your Borden coupon August 27th through September 6th. Who says there's no such thing as a free ride? Hope run leading the Tigers 3-0. The A's are coming to bat down the seventh inning. Huger has a pitch a strong game. He had a lot of problems in the opening inning. He walked the first three men and all three scored. Since then, he's uh, given up a couple of walks, but he's allowed only one single throughout the whole game. And he has now struck out six. He struck out the side in the fourth inning and struck out two in the sixth inning. His first strikeout had come in the second inning. Well, now Davey Lopes, the veteran infielder, will be the first man to face him in the seventh. One other game uh, this afternoon in the Major Leagues. In the National League, the Cubs beat San Francisco Giants. That's too straight for them over the Giants. They won it this afternoon at Wrigley Field, 8-4. Here's Lopes, and the right-hand batter swings. It's a long fly to left. Herndon going back to the fence. He'll have room. He makes the catch about four feet in front of the fence. One pitch and one down in the Oakland seventh inning. Mitchell Page will be the next man to bat. <laughs> left hand about it with a fly to right field and a strikeout. That's his record so far. Three runs, one hit for Oakland. They've made no errors. The Tigers have no runs and six hits. There's a foul that'll reach the seats on the third base side. Mike Heath waiting on deck. Page uh, stands deep in the batter's box, better than ease. Here's the motion by Jerry Uja. He pitches. It is a fastball outside. One and one, the count on him. There's a drive to left center. It'll be in for a hit, the second hit off Uja. Page is on with a single. It'll bring up Heath, who had the first hit. He's also had a walk. Heath uh, likes the uh, pitch inside. Basically a high fastball hitter. Tigers try to pitch him low and away. 
Majority of the major league hitters are fastball hitters and highball hitters. You find a batter in the majors that likes the low pitch. He is usually a left-hand batter. That's not absolute, but it's uh, sort of a uh, general rule. Here's the set now by Uger. The right-hander delivers, and the pitch is in too close, ball one. Pashnik and Underwood, uh, one of each, uh, throwing in the Detroit bullpen. Infield and double play depth against Keith. Three nothing, Oakland leads. Tigers trying to get back in this one, but Oakland batting now in the last half of the seventh. The pitch is swung on, hit the Cabell. Throw to Whitaker, one. Rene to Leach. It's two for the price of one for the Tigers on the side out. No runs, one hit, no errors, and nobody left. And at the end of seven, it is Oakland three, Tigers nothing. Does the word thatch mean anything to you? No, it's not how a baby chick gets born. Actually, thatch is an accumulation of undecomposed grass parts and other debris that can choke a lawn to death. What it does is keep the rain, air, and fertilizer from getting down to the root system of your grass. Now, we wouldn't bring up this nasty problem if your local snapper dealer didn't have a pleasant way to remove thatch. A lot more pleasant than messing up your lawn with a power rake or messing up your back with a hand rake. The solution is the Snapper HiVac Lawn Machine with the economical Thatcherizer attachment. The Thatcherizer simply plucks the harmful thatch from your lawn and the mower vacuums it into the grass catcher for easy disposal. So if you want a beautiful, revitalized lawn, get a Snapper HiVac Lawn Machine with the economical Thatcherizer from your local Snapper dealer. Snapper, discover the difference. What's the big deal? Well, behind every Bonanza dinner, there's a great big deal. The delicious Fresh Tastics Food Bar. It's more than just another salad bar. It's heaped with over 40 fresh vegetables and fruits, just baked breads and lots of tempting desserts. It's the salad that comes with your dinner at Bonanza. Grab a platter and have as many refills as you like. Or make a meal of their Fresh Tastics. All you want for one little price. What's the big deal? The Fresh Tastics Food Bar at Bonanza. Tigers come in about in the eighth inning. Keogh and uh, Uger still dueling away. Keogh tuning up now for the Tiger 8. Steve and Mary Ann Kaufman of Cincinnati, Michigan, out to see the Tigers in action. And also Dennis and Ann the mayor, who hail from uh, Muskegon and Detroit and East Lansing. Glenn Wilson will lead it off. He has uh, kept his hitting streak alive with one for three this afternoon. A single his third time at bat. Prior to that, he had lined a third and struck out. Now faces the right-hander. Wilson, Herndon, and Nivey to try to get it going. The Tigers need three to tie here in the eighth inning. Strange in totals right now. No runs and six hits and no errors for Detroit. Three runs and two hits for Oakland and no errors. There's a curve in too close. He spins out of the way. Ball one, the count on uh, young Mr. Wilson. Batting 326. He hits a foul uh, down the first base side. Coming over is Heath, and the catcher makes the catch. Tigers have been a uh, done a good bit of first ball hitting against him. There's a high fly to right. Should be caught. Armless to his glove side. He makes the catch. 
Saw uh, had to play a side saddle because of that bright sun. No clouds up there to act as background with the fly ball. Two down, nobody on in the Tiger 8. Here comes Ivy. He picked up the first Tiger hit with a single in the second, then fight out the next two times. Right hand uh, standing deep. The outfield pulled around the left on Mike. Three nothing Oakland leads in the eighth inning. And he swings as a slow roller hit to the glove side of the shortstop. Stanley guns it over to first and the Tigers are out one, two, three in the eighth inning. Oakland comes to bat in their eighth. They lead Detroit three nothing. In times like these, while you're busy learning about deposit options, short-term investments, and variable interest rates, you may be ignoring the one banking service you use most, your checking account. For example, do you still pay a service charge for each check you write? You could avoid it with a Bank of Commerce extra special checking account. Would you like overdraft protection? You could get it with Checkmate. Or how about earning interest on checking? You could do it with our Now account. These three checking options are part of a service we call One for All, available only at Bank of Commerce. Of course, other banks may offer one or more of these options, but many of those big downtown banks do not offer minimum balance requirements as low as ours. Take a fresh look at the banking service you use most, your checking account. If your bank doesn't offer you what we do, you need a better bank, a strong bank. In times like these, you need Bank of Commerce. Member FDIC, Hamtramck, Warren, Centerline, Avon, and Shelby Townships. The Bank of Commerce invites you to attend the Hamtramck Festival September 3rd through September 6th. Meet the enemy of your engine. Abrasive dirt in the oil. Motorcraft oil filters fight the enemy. Motorcraft FL1A oil filters trap more dirt than any other leading filter. Motorcraft oil filters from Ford for the future of your car, for sure. In Dearborn, visit Nasser's Home Supply on Ford Road, and in Ypsilanti, go to Huron Auto Parts on South Huron Street. Huge here on the mound, ready to face uh, Fred Stanley, who'll lead off the Oakland eighth inning. Uh, Fred has gone over for two, then Ricky Henderson and Wayne uh, Gross will follow. Billy Martin has his bullpen busy, the left-hander Tom Underwood, and the right-hander Brian Kingman throwing down there. Three runs in the opening inning for Oakland. They scored on uh, three walks. All three men who drew a base on balls came in to score. And that's the story of the game. The pitch to Stanley is the ball low. Henderson picked up two steals in that first inning. Now has 117, one short of the all-time mark. Huger, ready to go to work. The pitch to Stanley is a wide one. Ball two, two and oh on Fred. 17,098 paying to see this one. 17,098, that's the paid admission at the Coliseum this afternoon, bright and sunny. Here's a wide one, uh, ball three to Stanley. Well, the crowd doesn't like this. They know that uh, Henderson's coming up next. They don't want any impediment on the bases in front of him. Here's the wind up by Uger, and uh, Stanley takes the ball. Oh, he walks in. Is the sixth walk of Huger. Uh, Three of them uh, came in the first inning. You think Billy Martin might pinch in for Ricky Henderson here? You say you think Billy Martin might pinch in for Ricky Henderson? <laughs> that would be quite a move, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> They'd probably just take Billy and throw him in the bay if he did that. <laughs> Here's Ricky at the plate now. He has a, a walk, a foul out the right, fly to center field. He has stolen uh, two bases. Red Stanley at first base, Henderson waiting at the plate. And the pitch is a ball in too close off the middle of Fahey. Fahey goes out to talk for the injury. Throughout most of baseball history, the base on balls has not counted as a timeless bat. Well, the batter was first exempted from a time at Battle on the Walk in 1877, right after the National League got started. And then uh, 10 years later in 1887, 
a base on balls counted as a hit. And there were a, there was a record number of 400 hitters that year, as you might imagine. Henderson has uh, over 100 walks already. Here's the pitch. There goes Stanley. There's a line drive to left field. Base hit. Henderson feels it on one out. Stanley stops the second. Two and on. Nobody down. The hit and run single. And Henderson punches one to left. Now Gross will be the batter. Oakland, they're batting in the eighth inning. They've got runners at first and second and nobody down. This crowd getting a little more excited. Infield about halfway up. Gross stepping into the batter's box. He's walked and flat out twice. One of the three who scored a run in the opening inning, 3 0 Oakland in the eighth. So a walk and a single setting up this scoring chance for the A's. Outfield is deep and uh, straight away on growth. Huger has slowed his pitching pace at the mound. He sets his the throw to second. They've got uh, Stanley in a pickoff. Henderson not going anywhere. And now. Uh, Cabell sort of runs him back and uh, Whitaker makes the tag. So they kick Stanley off and that opens up the gates for Ricky Henderson. One to six to five to four. And now has a chance to tie the record here in the eighth inning. Oakland batting with a man on. That's Henderson at first base. One man down. Wayne grows at the plate. The outfield is straight up. Here comes Roger Craig out. He wants the conference. Billy Martin has uh, come out of his dugout. And... Uh, has motioned over to his first base coach, Jackie Moore, to come in and talk with him. There's a slight aroma emanating from the diamond, Ernie, on that last play. Uh, Stanley did very little jockeying. Henderson made no attempt to advance, but it did clear the path down there ahead of him. And another thing, Cabell didn't look like he was too anxious to throw that ball and uh, make the put up. Stanley off. That's right. So it was going on both sides. But uh, they set up uh, what they wanted, I guess, the A's did, in the safe inning situation. Well, all the conferring has been concluded. And we are ready for action on the diamond. Henderson is at first base. He needs the one stolen base to tie the record of Move Rock. Gross is at bat, and Huger ready to pitch to him. Ricky has the lead. Here's the set. He draws a throw. He's back safely. Digging in, Ricky Henderson uh, draws another throw. This is a low one and a good pickup by Leach. He almost threw that one away. So all the eyes are focused on Ricky Henderson. 3 nothing. The Oakland A's lead the Tigers in the eighth inning. One man out. Henderson uh, trying to get a longer lead at first base. Edges uh, toward the second, another foot. Here's the set. Huger holds it. There's another throw to first. He's back safely. Wayne Gross steps out of the batter's box. Outfield is straight up on Gross and deep. Henderson edging off again along the lead for Ricky. Here's the set by the right-hander, Yuja. There he goes, a pitch out. Here's a throw. He slides. He is out at second base. Fahey cut him down, and Ricky Henderson disagreeing with a call by the umpire, Derwin Merrill, but he is out. He did not tie the record on that one. 
most satisfying play of the game right there. Ricky walking off second, still disputing the call with Derwood Merrill, who's umpiring now back a third. Here comes Billy Martin out. He wants to put up a protest. And the crowd urging uh, Billy on in his forensic. He's going at it pretty hot and heavy. Billy's putting on a show for the gang now. Their man, Henderson, has been cut down. He did not tie the record here this afternoon, at least not for now. Martin has a few more words to say to the Texan, Derwood Merrill, and now walks away back to his dugout. Yeah, that's the new record. He's been caught 39 times now, Ernie. So he was trying to tie Lou Brock, and he beat Ty Cobb. <laughs> <laughs> Two out in the eighth inning, and the wind up by Yuja. Gross takes that it is a ball though. So the little uh, cameo performance is over for the moment, and we go back to the big action of the ball game. The wind up by Yuja. The pitch is a ball outside. Three and all oh, the count on Gross. Two down, nobody on. Here's the motion by Yuja. And Gross takes the strike. Jerry ready again. Winds and deals. Gross takes. It is low. He walked him. That's the second walk of this inning. Number seven of the uh, game of Yuja. And Murphy will be the next man to bat for the Oakland. Leach holding on the bag with Wayne Gross. Here's the uh, set by Jerry. Murphy hits a fly ball to the right. It's fairly deep. Jones goes back and makes it over the shoulder catch to retire the side. No runs, one hit, a couple of walks, no errors. One man left, we go to the ninth inning. Oakland three, Detroit nothing. You want something better, healthy food is on your mind. Wendy's does it better, that's why you're Wendy's kind of people. You find our salad bar, deliciously complete. Well, fine, fresh ingredients, yeah. I go to Wendy's for their wonderful salad bar. Twelve garden fresh ingredients, six delicious dressings. I simply couldn't go to one of those other famous hamburger places for a salad. <laughs> they don't have a salad bar. That's why you're Wendy's. For a limited time, Wendy's kind of people can enjoy their garden fresh all-you-can-eat salad bar and refreshing iced tea for only $1.99. For all your high-altitude indoor and outdoor projects, True Value Hardware Stores are offering dependable Werner aluminum ladders with up-to-date features and down-to-earth prices. Hi, Pat Summerall to tell you their ruggedly built extension ladders have traction tread steps, double-rung locks, and slip-resistant shoes. And their sturdy step ladders have bracing on both top and bottom steps. Werner ladders are designed for safety and stability. And you'll find a wide selection, all value priced, at participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. Summertime picnics are twice the fun when the baskets are packed with the spiral-sliced honey-baked ham. Visit the Honey-Baked Ham Company in Livonia, Dearborn Heights, Taylor, and in Grand Rapids. Excitement at the Coliseum while we're away there. Murphy, the outfield, has said something to Derwood Merrill. Was tossed out of the ball game. And then uh, Billy Martin got the same treatment. Billy has uh, been tossed out. Now the various members of the A's from their dugout throwing objects out toward Merrill, who's at third base, and he's coming into the dugout to see what he can do. So it's 
not over yet. Warrior, the coach, has come up the dugout steps. He's trying to calm him down a little bit. And here comes Derwood Merrill in talking with Boya. Rocky Rowe, one of the other umpires coming in. And the third umpire, Riley, comes in. Murphy was given the thumb. He's not left the area yet. Now he is uh, going into the... They don't have a tunnel here. They have an exit that is uh, on the surface. And you can see him come into that exit way and head for the uh, tunnel and then the clubhouse. Most of the A's have gone back to their fielding position. All this stemming from the uh, caught stealing of Henderson in the uh, last inning. We're going to have some changes in the outfield. Merrill has ejected both Murphy and Martin. McKay is going to go to play second base, and Lopes is going to play center field, I think. Yeah, that's right. Lopes is in center. Henderson stays in left. Armas in right. And McKay takes Lopes' place at second base. Murphy was the first one. Apparently, when he went out towards center field, he said something to Derwood Merrill as he passed him, and it offended uh, Mr. Merrill, and he gave uh, Murphy the thumb, and then Billy Martin came out, and he was really angry. He began to jump up, take his cap off, and go through all kinds of gestures. And Merrill gave it to Billy, too, and he has left the premises. Let's pause right now for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. This is the 50,000-watt voice of the Great Lakes and the flagship station for the Detroit Tigers. You're listening to AM 76, WJR Detroit. the A's is still up on the uh, top dugout step yelling out to uh, Derwood Merrill. Kingman is throwing in the bullpen as we get ready for the ninth inning. Oakland with three runs in the opening inning on uh, three walks. Those stolen bases, two of them by Henderson, has a 3 nothing lead uh, trying to even the series. And uh, Cabell will lead it off against Keogh, who so far has blanked the Tigers. Dino's waiting on the first pitch, and here it comes. He takes it for a strike. He has topped the second, struck out, and bounced the third. 0 for 3 for the Tigers' third baseman today. There's a slow pitch in too close. One and one on Cabell. After Cabell, it'll be Leach and then Jones. Keogh coming right back. Fires. There's a bounding ball to third. Gross has an easy chance. Throw to Meyer. He got him. One away. And the last six and seven have gone down in a row against the slants of Keogh since the uh, single by Jones and started the seventh inning. Here's Leach. He struck out, walked, and fly to left. There's a strike call, the breaking ball over. Outfield slightly to right on Rick. And the infielding back, except for Gross at third. And the left-hand batter takes one in the dirt. Of the count even, one and one. Three-nothing Oakland. Yuja has allowed only three hits, but Oakland got three runs without a hit in the first inning. Leach takes, and it is ball two. Two balls and a strike. Keogh into action, delivers. Leak swings, there's a fly ball that should be caught. It's in the center field. Lopes is there, fighting the sun. Makes the catch for the out. And there are two down in the Tiger night. Lynn Jones hit into fourth and then single the next two trips. Two for three. Now you can hear some of the uh, Oakland fans uh, Getting on uh, Mr. Derwood Merrill, the third base umpire. Here's the pitch to Lynn. It is a strike, a hard slatter on the outside corner. Oakland three, Tigers nothing. Uh, two down in the Tiger night inning. 
Keogh deals. Here's a fly ball to the left. It should end the game. Henderson is under it. Waiting, waiting. He gloves it, and the game is over. Tigers go one, two, three in the ninth inning. The final score, Oakland three, Detroit nothing. Some people say that all gasolines are created equal. But when you buy gasoline at a Marathon service station, you may be in for a surprise. You see, we have a special kind of fuel treatment that makes a whole lot of difference. Every time we deliver Marathon gasoline, we inject a top quality fuel additive. This additive gives Marathon customers better fuel economy, a smoother running engine, less engine wear, and lower repair bills. Whether you fill her up or just buy a few gallons. Pay a visit to your Marathon service station and you'll soon discover that although gasolines may seem to have been created equal, some are more equal than others. Be a winner. Be a marathoner. Marathon. Best in the long run. You may have thought of your friendly neighborhood Bonanza restaurant as just a great place for steak. Well, we're certainly not going to argue with you about that. They're proud of their sirloins and their T-bones and their ribeyes and their chopped steaks. But they also want you to know that Bonanza is a great place for shrimp and chicken and fish and barbecued ribs and great meals for the kids and our fantastic food bar that puts ordinary salad bars to shame. So don't think of Bonanza as just a place for great steak. Think of Bonanza as a great place to get a great meal. Now the A's wind up splitting with the Tigers in this short two-game series by winning the second game here this afternoon three to nothing on a six-hit shutout by Matt Keough. Keough racking up his 11th win of the year against 16 losses. But Jerry Uger allowed only three hits in the ball game. But his own wildness in the first inning was his undoing. The A's scoring all three runs in the first without benefit of a hit. And that proved to be enough as they won it three to nothing. Three runs, three hits for Oakland, no errors. They left three men on base. The Tigers had no runs, six hits, no errors. And the Tigers left seven men on base. Uger, going the distance, suffers his seventh loss. He's won seven. Jerry struck out six, walked seven, including three walks in the first inning, and uncorked one wild pitch in the first. A Keo went the distance for the tenth time this season and struck out four, walking one. The game took two hours, 24 minutes, before 17,098 here at the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum. The big story, Ricky Henderson and his pursuit for the all-time base-stealing record set by Lou Brock. He needed three coming into the ball game. He got two in the first inning and then was cut down in the eighth inning. A uh, call that precipitated a continuing argument resulting in the ejection of Henderson's outfield teammate, Dwayne Murphy, and manager Billy Martin as the Tigers came to bat in the ninth inning. I'll be back to recap the scoring and how it went here at Oakland in just a moment. If you want to clean up by on a new Chevrolet, now's the time during Chevy's gigantic factory-authorized year-end clearance. Special factory incentives make it possible for your Chevy dealer to save you hundreds of dollars now on many popular Chevrolets. Save hundreds of dollars now on Chevy Chevettes, including Chevette Scooter, already one of the lowest-priced four-door hatchbacks sold in America. Save hundreds on the versatile Chevy Citation. Citation's been the best-selling front-wheel drive car in America over the past three years combined, based on manufacturers' retail deliveries. Save hundreds of dollars on Chevy Celebrity, one of America's roomiest front-wheel drives. Save hundreds of dollars on Chevy Cavalier, utilizing advanced technology in a sedan, coupe, hatchback, and wagon. Saving supply only to retail sales on new 1982 models delivered by August 31st. So hurry. See your Chevy dealer now during Chevy's gigantic factory-authorized year-end clearance. If you're a sports fan and you don't have the WJR listening habits weekday evenings, you could be missing some of the best radio around. WJR Sports Director Frank Beckman chairs Sports Wrap each evening from 8 to 11 
a sports talk show that takes you behind the scores and commentary and puts you in touch with some of the biggest names in sports. So if you want to tune in on sports, tune in to WJR Sports Wrap, weeknights from 8 to 11, and following Tiger Baseball, right here on WJR Detroit. People who know quality know the honey-baked ham. A ham so good, it'll haunt you till it's gone. Honey-baked ham. In Livonia, Dearborn Heights, Taylor, and in Grand Rapids. Well, the story of this game really was written in the first inning, although there were some later episodes, but they did not really have anything to do with the eventual outcome of the contest. In the very first inning, uh, Ricky Henderson, the leadoff man for Oakland, came into the game with 115 stolen bases. He wanted to uh, at least tie, if not surpass, Lou Brock's record of 118 stolen bases while the club was still at home because after this game today, Oakland goes on the road. Well, Henderson drew a walk from Jerry Uger to lead off the first inning. Uh, Uger just uh, trying to work that outside part of the plate, didn't find it. Now, Henderson gets on first base. Now, Bill Fahey started behind the plate for the Tigers today because just prior to game time, Lance Parrish got the call from Detroit that his wife Arlene was in labor and expected uh, to produce their second child shortly. So Lance uh, got out of his uniform, into street clothes, and uh, went to the airport to head back to Detroit. So Bill Fahey was called upon to uh, help keep Henderson honest on the bases, and it was up to Jerry Uger to help out too, but Jerry wound up walking Henderson. Uh, right off the bat. Well, Henderson, on the very first pitch to Wayne Gross, took off and stole second base, number 116. Then, Wayne Gross had a walk finished off to him. Well, that put runners at first and second. And then they pulled the double steal. Henderson moving to third, Gross to second. So it was Henderson's 117th stolen base. With Dwayne Murphy at the plate, Huger, still wild, unable to get the ball in the strike zone, threw a wild pitch, and that permitted Henderson to score the game's first run. Gross move over to third on the uh, wild pitch. Well, he finished off a walk to Murphy. Three straight walks. And then... Murphy stole second base, so that was the fourth steal of the inning. And Tony Armas did a grounder to Trammell. He had only one play at first base. As Gross came in to score the second run, Murphy moving to third. And Danny Meyer came up, hit a sacrifice fly to center to score Murphy with the third run of the inning. Three runs in, no hits. Well, the A's wound up getting a single in the fifth inning from Mike Heath, a single in the seventh from Mitchell Page, and a single in the eighth from Henderson. And that was the other episode. With one out, with nobody out, Fred Stanley let off with a walk. Henderson singled him to second base. Then Stanley got picked off second base. That cleared the path for Henderson to try to tie the record of Lou Brock. Well, he took off after several throws to first by Jerry Uger, and on a pitch out, say he gunned him down. A very close play at second base, and the A's argued Henderson didn't believe he was out. Neither did Billy Martin, who came out for a little show then, came back into the dugout. Then. As the Tigers came to bat in the ninth inning, Dwayne Murphy said something to Derwood Merrill, who made the call at second base, on his way to center field. And he was ejected from the ball game. Well, Martin came out, and he got the ejection as well. Things quieted down, and the Tigers went out 1-2-3 in the top of the ninth inning, and the A's had won the ball game 3 to nothing. So, Ricky Henderson is still one short of tying the record, and he'll go on the road. The A's now headed for Minnesota. Uh, to, or rather, for Milwaukee. And it is expected that uh, Henderson would break the record there this weekend, but not against the Tigers this time. Tigers are off tomorrow. They'll move up the coast to Seattle to open a four-game series on Thursday night. So much for this game. I'll be back to check the scoreboard and schedule in just a moment after these messages. Nobody trucks like we do. We go out of our way. Nobody trucks like we do. Come truck with Chevrolet. Nobody trucks like we do. For 1982, Chevrolet has been selling more new trucks than anyone. And it's no wonder when you have a truck like the new size Chevy S10. There's never been a truck like it before. Nobody trucks like we do. Come truck with Chevrolet. Now, during the Chevy truck sales drive, 
special incentive to dealers make possible savings of hundreds of dollars on new S10 and Chevy Love pickups, plus full-size C and K 10 and 20 pickups. You must take retail delivery by September 22nd. Check the savings now during the Chevy Truck Sales Drive, and you will see why. Nobody trucks like we do. We go out of our way. Nobody trucks like we do. Come truck with Chevrolet. Nobody trucks like we do. Once there was an oil company that had a big idea about a very good product. The name of the company was Marathon, and the name of the product was gasoline. The big idea was to give Marathon's customers something extra every time they visited a Marathon service station. The extra was the highest grade fuel additive available. They injected this long distance additive during every delivery to a Marathon service station. This long distance additive helped to give greater gasoline mileage, cleaner, smoother running engines, and lower maintenance costs. See, when Marathon thinks big, it thinks big for its customers, not for itself. That way, Marathon customers are happy customers. That's the big idea. Be a winner. Be a Marathoner. Marathon, best in the long run. Pretty much an off day in terms of day ball in the major leagues. One game in the American National League this afternoon at Wrigley Field. The Chicago Cubs have spotted the Giants a three to nothing lead, then rallied for five runs in the second inning. And the Cubs went on to beat San Francisco eight to four. Eight runs, ten hits, no errors for the Cubs. Four runs, six hits, two errors for the Giants. Perky Jenkins started and survived a shaky start. He went long enough into the eighth inning before giving way to Bill Campbell. And Jenkins got his ninth win against 13 defeats. Campbell earning his seventh save. Uh, Rich Gale was the San Francisco starter. And the former Royal didn't last long. He was uh, it, relieved in the second inning. Holland came on. Then Brining took over in the sixth. Gale the loser. Five wins and 13 losses. Sular's homered in the first inning for San Francisco. His first of the year. And Bill Buckner hit a three-run homer for the Cubs in their five-run second inning. His 11th of the season at 13,712 at Wrigley Field. Coming up tonight, San Diego plays at Pittsburgh. The Dodgers are at St. Louis. Philadelphia at Atlanta. Montreal is at Cincinnati. And the Mets play at Houston. The Atlanta Braves have regained a first place. That is a share of it in the National League West by coming back after losing 19 out of 21 ball games. They have rebounded, winning uh, five in a row now. I think four of them by one run. And they have come back into a tie for first place with the Los Angeles Dodgers, with San Diego now three games off the pace in third place in the West. Now in the East, St. Louis currently holds a three-game lead over Philadelphia. The Cardinals hosting the Dodgers in a big series uh, there at St. Louis. In the American League, all the action coming up tonight. Chicago at Cleveland. Toronto is at Baltimore. Also in the East, Minnesota at New York. And Kansas City at Texas. Milwaukee at California, Boston at Seattle. And in terms of the standings, Milwaukee now with a five and a half game lead over uh, the uh, Boston Red Sox. Baltimore seven and a half back. The Tigers, by losing this afternoon, have slipped back into a virtual tie with the Yankees for fourth place at 10 games off the pace. In the Western Division, California hosting Milwaukee again tonight has a two game lead over Kansas City. The Royals busy at Texas. I'll be back for more from the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum after these messages. At Anheuser-Busch, we gave our brewmasters this challenge. Brew a light beer worthy of the king of beers. One with a clean, distinctive taste. Budweiser Light lives up to the challenge. Bring out your best. Bring out your best. They brewed this beer with the best ingredients and with beechwood aging made famous by the king. You'll taste the best in Budweiser Light. Bring out your best Budweiser Light. Bring out your best Budweiser Light. To brew Budweiser Light, our brewmasters knew it would take time, patience, and skill. 
They knew the best never comes easy. That's why there's nothing else like it. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. First thing in the morning, right there on the doorstep, Free Press has the latest news to start up your day. First thing in the morning, news, sports, and features, funny things to make you smile and help you on your way. Free Press, first when you need it most. And the Free Press is first with the cheapest classifieds in town. Free Press Gold ads are a petty pitcher's delight. Two lines, seven days, for just $9.49. That's right, an entire week's worth of advertising for less than $10. Plus, Free Press Gold ads have a new format that's easy to read. And you can charge your gold ad on Visa or MasterCard. Phone 222-5000 for your gold ad today. Free Press, first when you need it most. Free Press. Free Press Gold Ads really bring results. Phone 222-5000 now. LA Tigers so far have played five games out here on the West Coast. They have managed two wins and uh, three defeats, splitting with the A's in a two-game set, losing today three to nothing as Matt Keough blanked the Tigers on six hits in winning his 11th against 16 defeats. Jerry Uger going the distance as well for the Tigers. Suffered his seventh loss. He's won seven. Three runs, three hits for Oakland. No runs, six hits for the Tigers, who left seven on compared to three for the A's. The story in the first inning in this ball game, when Uger pitching to Bill Fahey, a late replacement behind the plate, knowing Ricky Henderson was after the all-time stolen base record, did not get the ball over in the first inning. Walking Henderson, he stole second, his 116th. And then after Wayne Gross walked, they pulled the double steal, number 117 for Henderson. With Dwayne Murphy batting, Uger uncorked a wild pitch, permitting Henderson to score, and Gross took third. And Tony Armas then bounced up to get in one run, another run to make it 2 nothing, and a sacrifice fly by Danny Meyer scored the third run of the inning. And that was all the scoring of the ball game, as Uger gave up only three hits. But his wildness and inability to keep the base runners in place in the first inning enabled the A's to score three times. The Tigers now move on to Seattle for a four-game series after a day off tomorrow. They'll send out Jack Morris in the opener Thursday night against Mike Moore. Morris with a record of 14 and 12. Moore has won six and lost 10. Our broadcast coverage for the first three nights from Seattle will begin at 10.15 Michigan time. That's it from Oakland for 1982. For Ernie Harwell, this is Paul Carey saying so long. Once again, the final score, the Oakland A's three, the Detroit Tigers nothing. <laughs>